Now I'm going to look at some multiplication of fractions. My first example is going to be 2 thirds multiplied by 5 sevenths. When we multiply fractions, we don't have to worry about making the bottom denominators the same. All we do is multiply the top numbers and multiply the bottom numbers, and there's our answer. So it's actually quite straightforward. 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 7 is 21. So our answer is 10 21 now we might get more complicated fractions to multiply together or we might get fractions with larger numbers for example 9 seventieths multiplied by 14 fifteenths in this case we just multiply the top numbers and multiply the bottom numbers but when we multiply 9 and 14 and 17 and 15 we're going to end up with some rather large numbers so if we can we can try and cancel rather than cancelling at the end We'll see if we can cancel at the start. Are there any numbers at the top and any numbers at the bottom that will cancel? You can see that 7s go into 14 and 7s go into 70. So we can actually cancel, that is divide top and bottom, by 7. 7s into 70 go 10 and 7s into 14 go 2. What about 9 and 15? Will they cancel? Well, 3 is going to 9 and 3 is going to 15. So we can cancel by 3. 3 is into 9 go 3 and 3 is into 15 go 5. That leaves me with lots of easier numbers to multiply together. Multiply the top numbers. 3 by 2 is 6 and 10 times 5 is 50. So when multiplying fractions, multiply the top numbers, multiply the bottom numbers. But if you can see any cancelling that can go on beforehand, try and do that before you multiply the numbers together. What about if you have some whole numbers? Here's an example. 7 whole ones multiplied by 3 fifths. Instead of thinking of multiplying by 7 whole ones, we can think of multiplying by 7 fractional parts. But whole ones can always be written as 7 over 1. So I'm going to rewrite the question as 7 whole ones, 7 over 1, multiplied by 3 fifths, multiplied by 3 fifths. Now I simply multiply the top numbers together, 7 threes are 21, and multiply the bottom numbers together, and I get 5. Of course, this answer here is a top heavy fraction, so I'm going to write the answer as a mixed number. Remember, 5 fifths makes one whole one. I've actually got enough to make not only one whole one, but some more as well. 5 fifths makes one whole one, 10 fifths is 2, 15 fifths is 3 whole ones, and 20 fifths would make 4 whole ones. So, 4 whole ones with 1 fifth left over. Finally, I'm going to multiply together two mixed numbers. In this particular case, I'm going to multiply 2 and 1 third and 2 and 1 seventh. Before I can multiply mixed numbers together, I must make them into top heavy fractions. So, two whole ones needs to be turned into some extra thirds. Remember, three thirds is one whole one, so six thirds is two whole ones. And I've already got one third here, so that will give me a total of seven thirds. 2 and 1 seventh, well, 7 sevenths makes one whole one, and 14 sevenths makes two whole ones. Plus the one I've got extra, so that's 15 sevenths. Like before, I can look to see if I can cancel any numbers before multiplying. I could multiply 7 by 15 and 3 by 7 and get an answer. But I'm looking to see if I can cancel these numbers before I multiply. 7 and 7 cancel straight away. 7s into 7 go 1, 7s into 7 go 1. 3 and 15 also cancel because they can both be divided by 3. So 3s into 3 go 1 and 3s into 15 go 5. This leaves me with a very easy multiplication to finish off. 1 times 5 is 5 and 1 times 1 is 1. 5 over 1, remember, is the same as five whole ones. So 
That's my answer.